2017. Hello, my name is Igor, and here with me is uh, Linar and Yaroslav. Uh, <coughs> our team does uh, decompilation and deobfuscation and has experience uh, with most of uh, the common architectures. We also do code analysis, source and binary, including uh, pen testing, manual static analysis, and we also develop uh, analysis tools. In uh, today's talk, we'd like to tell you about one of our analysis tools. Uh, so we were doing quite a lot of uh, manual <coughs> IOS security analysis and a significant part of the analysis process was the same from application to application. So we decided to write a tool that will do most of the work for us. Uh, our goal was to develop uh, a tool <coughs> uh, that would take an uh, iTunes uh, application link as an input and uh, give us a security report and a, a record code as an output. Uh, so here is our plan. Uh, first we would like to obtain an uh, application binary, then we will uh, translate uh, this binary into some internal representation, analyze this uh, representation for security flows and then uh, translate it into <coughs> human readable uh, pseudocode. Uh, this last step is important because we want to show each vulnerability in some human readable context. Okay, and the first part is uh, how to get a binary. Uh, so getting a, an application binary is not as trivial as it may seem because uh, all uh, iOS apps are distributed through Apple App Store uh, only, and the uh, binaries in the App Store are decrypted. Uh, moreover, uh, the only known way to decrypt an App Store application binary is to start an, uh, the application on an iOS device, let device's processor decrypt it, and uh, load it into memory, and then dump the decrypted binary from memory. Uh, to make this work, uh, we will need a jailbroken iOS device. And as we anyway need a jailbroken device to decrypt the application, we can use it to download the application as well. So this whole step, getting the binary, will be done on the jailbroken uh, iOS device. Uh, so let's uh, quickly overview what we can do on a jailbroken iOS device. Uh, of course, none of this is uh, uh, can, is available on a stock iOS device without jailbreak. Uh, first of all, we can uh, connect to the device uh, using ECSH uh, protocol and get a nice bash command line. Uh, what is more, there is a code injection platform called the CD Substrate, uh, and it provides an uh, API to call any method from uh, runtime of any running iOS application and also allows uh, us to hook any such method and change its uh, implementation. And uh, finally, um, there is Clutch, out of the box tool to um, decrypt and dump uh, iOS applications. Uh, <coughs> so we decided to go with the highest level possible and just uh, use graphical interface uh, when convenient. Uh, that means that now we need to uh, first to figure out uh, and need first to figure out a chain of method calls and GUI decisions uh, to initiate and uh, manage and load, and then figure out uh, how to make needed GUI decisions uh, programmatically. So, uh, <clears throat> in order to do that, we need to work with two built-in uh, iOS applications: uh, Springboard app uh, and uh, App Store app. Uh, Springboard is a central application in the iOS uh, graphical interface, uh, so we needed its uh, runtime to make our GUI decisions, like dealing with some system alerts <coughs> and stuff. We also need to use the uh, App Store runtime to initiate the download. Uh, so we figured out this stuff and uh, <coughs> home to this uh, chain of uh, method calls. Uh, first of all, uh, our tool uh, unlocks device, uh, then it uh, uninstalls all apps to make space, 
and uh, then uh, opens an iTunes page like this one uh, with a target up application. Then at uh, this page we need to press this get button. After that, uh, <coughs> App Store will ask us to sign in uh, and uh, there will be some alert uh, and we need to fill our login and password and press OK. Uh, then uh, the download will start and uh, we'll wait until this get button uh, uh, become open button, meaning that uh, the application was downloaded and uh, that we can uh, come to the final step and uh, decrypt it with Clutch. Uh, so now let me just show you how it's done. Okay, is it? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So here I have uh, an iPhone, this one, and uh -huh. uh, the screen shows here. So I'm going to launch my script and see what happens. Now we need to wait a little bit. <coughs> and and that's it. Okay, and uh, and now it's complete. Uh, uh, so that's how it works. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, and uh, next part is uh, what we do after that. We are going to translate uh, decrypted binary into intermediate representation. So, as soon as we get a decrypted binary, uh, we need to translate it <coughs> into the intermediate re representation that is suitable for analysis and uh, representing results of uh, vulnerability search. <coughs> as most translation tools, uh, compilers as well as decompilers, we decided to use an intermediate representation that is more high level than uh, the binary code, but uh, more low level, that's source code. To obtain precise results, uh, we have to deal with the uh, following challenges during binary translation. In particular, we have got a uh, lot of things to recover. First of all, uh, we need to s uh, separate functions from the data and attach uh, names to these functions with correspondence uh, to the function names from the source code, if it possible, of course. For example, if the source code contains a function that disables certificate checks, we have to know its name to understand the source code semantics. Otherwise, it will be very difficult to us or even impossible to find vulnerabilities in such code. Moreover, uh, we have to understand what arguments are passed uh, to the function and also we should know the values and types. Based on that information, uh, we have to recover the original semantics of the program inside the IR, including the uh, control flow graph of the program and the flow of the program. The majority of the source code is uh, written in Objective-C or Swift, so we have to recover the runtime information inf interfaces from the binary file that is classes, uh, interfaces, protocols, and other stuff. Applications are mostly FAT binaries uh, that uh, contain at least uh, two executable images for the ARM architecture and for the RR64 architecture. 
At first, uh, we supported translation for both ARM and uh, Arch 64 architecture, but now, as developers and mobile platform owners are mostly focusing on the uh, Arch 64 architecture, we have abandoned the ARM architecture support and do not support it anymore. Well, as I said before, uh, we had to pick some intermediate representation uh, that is suitable for representing binary program semantics and uh, suitable for security analysis. So we decided to use the LVM as internal representation of uh, recovered code. LVM pr provides a handy static single segment based intermediate representation uh, that is well suited for representing C family programs, uh, including the Objective C programs and even Swift. Moreover, we can run multiple analysis built in VM for program transformations and optimization, including the alias analysis, many of them, uh, dominators, tree builders, uh, loops analysis, and other transformations and uh, optimizations. Also, we have much experience with the, this representation, so LVM was the perfect match for us. There are basic ideas that we implement in our translator. We implemented a high performance tool that translates iOS applications to LVM. It can recover functions and function calls, arguments of that functions, uh, and function types, recover control flow graph of the program and reconstruct types and variables. During the translation and analysis, we also use all information uh, about class and interfaces we were able to recover. And this is the basic picture how it uh, works. Our tool receives a binary application as input, passes the image and creates an application memory model. Based on this uh, memory model, we can extract uh, information about classes, about functions, and recover the control flow, flow graph of the application. We analyze this data using various algorithm bases based on the information we recovered before uh, and based on the data flow of the program. Uh, so this is how we recover variables and even the types. After that, we generate the LVM representation and optimize it for better results. During the image passing phase, the encrypted binary, uh, oh, sorry, the decrypted binary is unpacked if necessary. The file format that is used for executable in iOS is called MACO. The MACO binary format was uh, well documented until Apple removed the documentation from the public access. Using uh, self write and MACO parsers, uh, we extract information uh, about uh, program symbols and pass runtime information, as well as information on classes and interfaces of the application for both Objective-C and Swift. Once we pass the image, we start the process of recovering functions and the control flow graph of the program. For this, for this purpose, uh, we developed an iterative recursive algorithm that takes a work list with addresses of function starts as input. We use the following sources of uh, function start addresses. There are entry point, uh, address from the function starts section, uh, function addresses obtained during runtime parsing. For example, function addresses from the objective C class definitions so or virtual functions addresses from Swift or C++ virtual tables. The algorithm recursively traverses all, all the functions at known addresses and creates uh, a control flow graph for each recovered function. We also have to take special care of trampolines and tail calls. Here you can see an example of uh, trampoline for function of C release. During the translation, we replace this trampoline with a call to the real of C release. 
functions in, a, in ARM uh, often end with a tail call, uh, which also should be accounted for in uh, the CFG recovery. This is an example of an idiomatic code for the iOS application. A function concludes with a tail call to the object series. So we should take special care about it. As I mentioned earlier, we recover the information on interfaces of Objective-C and Swift class. In particular, we are able to recover classes, protocols, method names, signatures for Objective-C classes. For Swift, we can only recover the class hierarchy and create virtual tables for these classes. All our information on Swift classes is lost during com compilation, so we are unable to recover it. We also implemented our own demagnier for uh, Swift symbol names uh, to make translation results more human readable. So there is an example of recovered Objective-C interface. And uh, there is an example of recovered auxiliary information about uh, an Objective C class. Uh, there is an encoded uh, signature for each method of the class. We can decode the signature to get precise uh, information about argument types and the region time type of this function. Next slide uh, shows us uh, an example of uh, recovery Swift class. It's worth mentioning that we were unable to recover anything but uh, class names and virtual tables. Even function names are missing and cannot be recovered from the binary. So as after we obtain the basic information about the functions, we run a series of analysis to get more precise information about the semantics of the program. During analysis, uh, we recover the memory objects used by the program such as temporary variables, uh, local and global variables, and most importantly for security analysis, strings. We also recover types of variables and arguments. In our current implementation, we only support integer, float, and uh, pointer types, but uh, we are currently imp implementing the recovery of complex types such as arrays and structs that has, has been already implemented uh, in other in an other hour <coughs> in binary to LVM translation tool for Yentl architectures. We can get more precise results using the knowledge base of known function signatures. For example, standard library or widely used libraries like OpenSSL and others. Moreover, function signature information for Objective-C methods is encoded in the binary, so it can be recovered and propagated uh, during type recovery. Based on the obtained information, we generate an intermediate representation that preserves the semantics of a given program. The obtained model is optimized for further <coughs> analysis. For example, we remove the code or, and run constant propagation paths, which is very useful when analyzing uh, the function arguments. So let's see an example of ARM to LVM translation. This slide contains an example of an Objective-C function. It's actually a part of the function uh, in a binary application. And this is how this function was translated to the LVM. So as you can see, we, we recovered names of called functions and precise argument types. And finally, this slide contains uh, the control flow graph of the recovered function. So this is how re binary recovery and translation is done by our <coughs> translation tool. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so, 
uh, we have uh, LLVM byte code, and we want to find vulnerabilities in it. Uh, at first, uh, we decided that it would be better if we show our uh, detected vulnerabilities uh, in some human readable context. Uh, so we developed a tool uh, that recovers, uh, that recovers uh, uh, some Objective-C Swift-like pseudocode from LLVM bytecode. The ultimate goal of this work is to develop uh, the compiler. Uh, but for now, we are extracting all the information we can get from binary code. Uh, function names, signatures, call sites, uh, arguments, types, st statements, etc. Uh, we are improving structural analysis, uh, which includes uh, precise recovery of uh, loops and uh, uh, if-else statements. Um, it will make uh, this tool much closer to the compiler. Uh, in uh, Swift binary code, we have less information than in uh, Objective-C binary code. For example, we have no function names. Uh, so Objective-C recovery is uh, more accurately. Uh, but uh, in most cases, uh, there is enough information for uh, interpret uh, the detected vulnerabilities. Uh, when the application uses uh, Swift, uh, there are its binary contains uh, both uh, Objective-C and uh, Swift functions. And uh, on, during, this, uh, during the binary translation, we uh, determine um, which function uh, is written on what language. Uh, and uh, we propagate this flag to uh, the pseudocode. Uh, so depending on this flag, we use uh, Objective-C or Swift uh, beta printing. Uh, our research uh, shows that uh, the most uh, dangerous vulnerabilities can be usually found by uh, pattern matching. Uh, also, pattern matching is fast, uh, so it's, it is important for large binaries. Uh, for, so we use uh, pattern matching on LLVM for now. For other vulnerabilities, we will develop uh, other data flow analysis algorithms, uh, for example, taint analysis. Um, uh, uh, and um, uh, we have done it already for uh, x86 uh, architecture uh, for detecting uh, memory uh, management bugs and uh, uh, formant uh, string vulnerabilities. Uh, we find vulnerabilities uh, in NLVM bytecode, so we want to demonstrate this uh, vulnerabilities on pseudocode. Uh, and we map uh, LLVM instructions to pseudocode line numbers. So when we find some vulnerable instruction in uh, an LLVM bytecode, we can locate, locate, locate uh, this uh, vulnerability in pseudocode. So let's discuss uh, vulnerabilities we can detect now. Uh, First of all, um, iOS, iOS applications uh, can uh, transfer some sensitive and uh, security critical information via non-protected connections, uh, and uh, it makes this application vulnerable to uh, man-in-the-middle attack. Uh, most of applications uh, from our research, um, they communicate with main web server, like uh, banking applications, uh, and this type of vulnerability is very important. Um, for example, uh, application can turn off uh, SSL certificate check. check. Uh, it uh, often happens when a uh, developer forget to, um, to remove the test code. Uh, and we can detect uh, such uh, functions. Uh, also, application can use uh, HTTP protocol to transfer some utility data, for example, maps, news, uh, etc., some information. And, um, this data can be tampered with, and uh, it uh, can help attacker to, um, to, to make a phishing attack or to change some application logic. Uh, we detect, detect all uh, constant strings in binary, uh, and so we can uh, find these connections. Uh, apps sometimes use uh, 
applications uh, sometimes use uh, uh, insecure cryptographic functions uh, like hashing, ciphering, seed random number generators, etc. MD4, MD5, uh, triple DES, uh, whatever. Uh, so, uh, also, application can uh, use hard coded uh, encryption key, and uh, the attacker can reverse the application, get this key, and use it for, uh, for um, sensitive data disclosure. Uh, so, we can match these uh, function names and uh, find these vulnerabilities. Um, every application can gain, gain access to pasteboard, so developers uh, have to turn off its usage, especially for important data. Uh, the common error is to, uh, to, uh, not to turn off uh, NSLock usage, uh, information in log uh, can help attacker, and this information can be simply viewed uh, in Xcode if you attach your device uh, to computer and you even don't need a jailbreak. Uh, finally, uh, application uh, have to implement a function uh, which describes uh, behavior in background mode. Otherwise, uh, the screenshot uh, will be saved in application directory. This screenshot can contain some uh, sensitive information on, like uh, credit card numbers, uh, telephone numbers, etc. Uh, and uh, information which is stored in uh, application directory can be stolen. Uh, then, uh, in iOS, uh, developers can use uh, reflection. Uh, they can call some methods by its names. And uh, this way, they can uh, gain access to a uh, private API, which is prohibited by Apple and is uh, insecure in some way. Uh, there are, uh, here are some uh, important vulnerabilities that, that, we, uh, that we don't detect now. Um, uh, all the information that is stored in application directory uh, can be stolen. Um, for example, uh, if attacker have physical access to device or this device is jailbroken. Uh, application can store sensitive, unencrypted sensitive inf information or some security critical information uh, in application directory, in preference files, in uh, some local databases, uh, or in network cache. Um, uh, important thing here is that uh, insecure data storage is dangerous uh, not uh, only because uh, that uh, it can lead to uh, data leakage, uh, but also that this data can be tampered with, and uh, if this data e is um, is um, uh, important if, for example, this data uh, defines some application behavior, the attacker can change this behavior. For example, we met across the application uh, which stores uh, its main web server uh, address uh, in preference files. So the attacker can uh, change this address from HTTPS to HTTP and uh, uh, to carry out uh, man the middle attack. The other example is when application stores um, the unsuccessful uh, attempts, uh, authorization attempts number in preference files, and, um, uh, and this application become vulnerable to uh, brute force attack. Uh, poor data validation vulnerabilities is uh, less important for iOS applications then for web application, but uh, it still can be found uh, here. Uh, both poor data validation vulnerabilities and sensitive data leakage uh, can be found by data flow analysis. We can track, uh, we must track um, the sensitive information through data flow. Um, the main problem here is that uh, we can, uh, we must uh, determine which information is sensitive. Uh, so how can we uh, sell, uh, tell that this uh, 
uh, variable contains, for example, password. Uh, we uh, suggest some heuristics. Uh, for example, using, of course, fun of course variable names, uh, then uh, data ciphering, uh, then um, uh, some API functions as sensitive data source, uh, and, for example, some ele elements of interactive analysis to ask user which information is sensitive. Uh, this work is in progress. Uh, then um, each application which operates uh, some sensitive information uh, shouldn't work on jailbroken device. But uh, the standard algorithm of jailbreak detection is, uh, ca can be by bypassed. Uh, so we can uh, detect this algorithm, implementation of this algorithm in binary code. Uh, I think the most important uh, class of vulnerabilities here is authentication vulnerabilities. Uh, no two-factor authentication, uh, weak person complexity requirements, and uh, weak control of uh, number of unsuccessful uh, authorization attempts. These vulnerabilities is hard, are hard to detect, uh, to be detected, and uh, usually they should be detected on server side. Uh, we have implementation for some server side and for Android applications, um, and we want to apply these ideas to iOS applications. Uh, the main ideas of our approach uh, is following. We detect uh, the counter, which is responsible for uh, accessful uh, attempts, uh, authorization attempts uh, number, uh, and we detect password validation function and fuzz this function to, to recover uh, its complexity requirements. Uh, here is some uh, piece of a demonstration. Uh, here we uh, show uh, some uh, assembly uh, vulnerable snippet. Uh, this, uh, in this snippet, we call uh, vulnerable function, function that uh, turns off uh, a cell certificate check. Uh, then we uh, translate this code to, uh, to LLVM. Here is our call. Uh, and finally, we have uh, this call, and we, we see that uh, the argument uh, is one, uh, so it's vulnerable in our pseudocode. Uh, so we have analysis report, this XML. Uh, we see what the uh, source uh, file, the line number, and the vulnerability name. We use uh, this tool uh, for uh, some bunch of applications, uh, and uh, here are some statistics uh, we can show. Of course, uh, these statistics represent the current states of our uh, tool. Of course, we have false positive, uh, false positives. Uh, as I said, uh, we uh, will enhance our uh, analysis engine, uh, but. Uh, uh, but our tool shows uh, these, statistics, the, these statistics, and uh, uh, that's, that's it. Oh, we presented uh, our tool set. Uh, this tool set uh, can uh, find vulnerabilities in iOS applications only using uh, its uh, iTunes link. Uh, and we present these vulnerabilities on uh, human readable pseudocode. Uh, the future work is to enhance uh, analysis, to develop data flow analysis algorithms, uh, taint analysis, etc., uh, to reduce number of false positives, uh, and to make our pseudocode closer to source code, so to uh, develop a decompiler. Thank you for attention. Any questions? <laughs> Uh, not a question, just a comment. 
Have you thought about um, uh, finding um, in the body in the body of uh, binary API keys, for example, for Amazon or other services? You know, mm -hmm. if you have uh, API key, you can use uh, the server and. Uh, Sometimes uh, some developers, they include not only these keys, they include also private keys for SSL. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, it happens, but we don't detect it automatically yet. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, first, uh, great tool. Uh, do you have any plans on releasing it, uh, the source? Uh, no, unfortunately, it's a proprietary tool. <laughs> okay, and um, so you showed some statistics uh, on how many apps is that uh, statistics based? A couple of hundreds. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I was just wondering, a lot of apps will introduce um, full SDKs, so there will be maybe uh, two or three functions for uh, SSL pin checking or, um, I don't know, other functionalities, obfuscation. Is, are those things thought about in the tool? So which form functions? For example, if uh, banking applications will use um, uh, official uh, SDKs, for example, uh, Himalto, let's say, and they have functionalities uh, which are in the SDK, so you will have S, uh, SSL pinning, which is a functionality in the SDK, but it's not because it's in the source or in the binary that the application uses it. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not quite, sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, no problem. I mean, it's a distracted. So are you talking about a distraction in the libraries? Asking potential for that. Thank you.